guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you another furniture flip. Now this piece isn't quite as rough as some of them that I come across. Normally I have some really dusty old antiques, but this one's actually been recently refinished by a different reseller. Um, her shop is closing and I was able to get this piece for $50. So I'm not hating the blue today, but I do think that I can add some personality to this piece that can help me earn a little bit more money in my antique booth, Green Onion Vintage. Here I'm showing you the colors I'm gonna be using. I'm using the color Drop Cloth and Sandbar from Dixie Belle. I also am using a bottle of water to help spread the paint as I uh, work on this project. That is the French Tip Dixie Belle brush that I'm gonna be using. I love it so much. You're also gonna need a tape measure, some painter's tape, and a pencil. And then I forgot to show you about the end. I'm going to be using the Dixie Bell Easy Peasy Clear Matte Spray Wax to seal the piece. And that's everything you're going to need to complete a look like this. So I am going to be doing a gingham look for this piece of furniture. I've never done gingham that I remember that kind of goes across the entire piece. I do gingham a lot on just the top surface. But today I'm going to be trying to wrap the stripes all the way around it gets kind of tricky and right now i'm measuring my stripes um, i'm trying to make all my stripes eight inches apart and i get a little confused here <laughs> figuring out my center line and uh, that's just pregnancy brain at work i'm 37 weeks pregnant as i work on this piece and it really needs to be like my last piece of furniture because this was too much but it turns out great, I promise. So stick around so you can see how it looks at the end. Right here, I am taping my stripes. You have to be careful when doing gingham that you are taping on the right side of the line that you just measured. So right now, I'm gonna be doing my first stripe in the drop cloth color, which is a, an off-white that Dixie Bell offers. And I need that stripe to be eight inches apart. So you need to make, make sure that you're taping your stripe on the right side of your mark so that your first line is eight inches apart. Um, I hope that's not confusing to you. I guess my point is if you tape on the wrong side of your mark, you're gonna have lines that aren't eight inches. You're gonna have ones that are closer to like six inches. So you wanna make sure that the ones that you are actually painting are properly spaced so I think there I had to do some adjustment um, but I figured it out and I taped just across the top now and then down the front for my uh, vertical stripes and I made sure that I centered these stripes so I found the top center line to be about 16 inches across and then I used that center as my mark for the whole way down. So you wanna be able to look at the piece and your lines uh, start in the center. Everything looks nice and centered. It's gonna get a little wonky later when I try to wrap it around the side, but I still think that it ends up looking good. So my goal with the paint job was to make sure that I didn't go too thick with the paint. I didn't really wanna lose all of the blue. I really like the blue shade here. I would say if you're looking for a Dixie Belle blue that is similar to this shade. I looked up online, I would say like the antebellum color is really close and there's also a Bunker Hill color. So I think either one of those would give you a similar blue shade if you wanna do this same look yourself. Um, so what I try to do with the gingham though is make sure that my paint's not going on too thick. So I'm using a lot of my spray water there to just kind of thin the paint out. I wanna be able to see some of the blue come through. And I don't mind it having some brush strokes because I almost want it to look like a gingham fabric would. So that does mean that you have to be more careful about the direction that your brush is going. So I try to keep my brush going up and down and vertical so that the strokes are going the same direction. And so that when it dries, it actually looks like it was on purpose and um, isn't just a mess. So now I'm going to be painting the same stripes just on the top surface and once again trying to keep my paint kind of translucent, almost like a watercolor effect. If you're new to my channel, I have two antique booths that I run with my mom and we refinish furniture, we make handmade goods, crafts, um, and then we also sell antiques. So if that interests you, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of antique booth tours and lots of DIY projects 
on this channel, I also have been doing a lot of Goodwill and thrift flips, as well as sharing my thrifting hauls. Uh, so that's all been really fun to share with you guys. I haven't been doing quite as much furniture lately because of the pregnancy, but it is something I really enjoy doing. Um, and like I said, this is probably going to be my last piece for a while. And it was a lot of fun to work on this one. Now once I've done my first stripes, I do need to remove the tape because when I do my overlapping stripe, I don't want there to be a gap between the paint. If you left the tape on there, there would be kind of an awkward gap when you go to do your horizontal stripes. So you need to make sure you take the tape off. I am trying to save it, so I kind of stick it on the back there so that I can reuse it because I'm going to be using a lot of tape for this project. Another thing I want to point out is when you're doing anything that has like a stencil to it or you're trying to tape a line, make sure that when you're at the tape, you're just, you're not globbing on a bunch of paint. I really don't put a lot of paint near my tape because I don't want the paint to run underneath. I really just do like a very light hand and that's how I get such nice clean lines. You just have to be really careful with how much paint is on your brush. So now I'm measuring where I'm going to have my horizontal stripes start. I'm starting at the top. I don't know if this was the best idea because my measurements get off. Um, I just feel like it's okay though. Like I know people really try to be perfectionists about the things that they do, but I feel like if you get too crazy about all the lines being perfect, it really takes the fun out of your project. So I, I'd like to approach it more as in art form and not so much as uh, something that needs to be absolutely perfect when you're done. So, okay, my lines aren't going to be great. They're not going to be measured perfectly, but it still looks really good at the end. And I, I just don't mind it being imperfect. I have a lot of people tell me that they they wish they could do, they wish they could paint like a piece of furniture in their house. And I just always feel like, you know what, why not just go for it and see how it goes? You know, it's a piece of furniture. It's not the end of the world. If it looks terrible, you can always repaint it. I'd much rather you just try and, and see how it goes rather than put it off forever and, and feel like you have to have a perfect plan. Because trust me, I never have a perfect plan. My pieces never turn out perfectly. Um, but people tend to like what I do. And so I think it really just comes back to being creative and just, just going for it. So now I'm moving on to the horizontal stripes that are going to wrap around the whole piece of furniture. These weren't quite so hard to measure. I think I started my first one about four inches down and then once again went with the eight inch gap that I was, I've been doing on the whole piece. mentioned earlier that I paid $50 for this. I really think that once I'm done and all the detail work has been done on this piece, I think I'm going to be able to ask closer to 160. I'll, I'll at least start that high. Um, I would definitely say that the time that I put into it would be worth that, but only the sellers can, but only the buyers, what am I talking about? Only the buyers can actually answer that question. So I always start at the price that I want. Um, 
And if I need to go down eventually in price, I'm okay with that. Right now I'm doing the horizontal stripe and I'm, I've switched over to the color called sandbar. Earlier I was doing the color drop cloth, which is like an off-white. Sandbar is more like a light tan almost. It's just a few shades darker than the drop cloth. And I love the combination of the two colors together. They're just really, really nice, warm shades of white. Um, the sandbar is almost more like a crockery color. I know you guys have heard me talk about it a million times on my channel because I've been using it a lot in my DIY upcycles. So I like it just that it's it's so warm. There's no like stark whiteness to it. And it's it just makes anything kind of have like an antique flair. Whereas white, I feel like, can go more modern. This kind of makes things feel a little more um, like French country. So that right there is the sandbar color. So you can, you can almost tell it's warmer. I know it's really hard to tell on camera, but it's definitely not as bright as the drop cloth. And keep in mind, like, the drop cloth is not even a bright white. You can see compared to, like, the handles on the front there. Like the handles are definitely bright white. And so you can see the difference between the handles and the paint colors that I chose. Now for the horizontal stripes, I'm not going quite as translucent as I did for the vertical, but I do want you to be able to see through the blue still. So I am still spraying it with water. And right now I'm showing you what I think really sets the gingham apart. So if you skip this step, you have gingham and it looks fine. But I think if you take the time to do this step right here, your gingham looks really nice and professional. So what I'm doing is taping where my new stripes overlap. So you can see I have a white stripe running vertically, a white stripe running horizontally, and in that square where they overlap, I re-tape that square. Yes, you've already painted this section twice, but I think it looks so good to paint it for a third time with a nice solid coat of whatever color you're using. So today, of course, I'm doing the sandbar color and I just think taking that extra time to do that overlapping square makes such a big like visual impact in your final look. So I do this for all of the squares. I only show you these top three squares because I feel like you guys probably understand what I'm saying. So just anywhere that you have an overlapping white line, go ahead and re-tape off that square and it's going to give it just such a nice clean look at the end. Now it's time for my absolutely favorite part, which is removing the tape. Throughout the whole project, you have a piece of tape on there almost the whole time, so it's hard to kind of gauge how things are looking, but when you remove that tape, you can see all your work has finally paid off. I just think it looks so pretty. So there you can kind of see, I don't have my lines measured perfectly for as it turns the corner, but I just, I just feel like it's fine and I still like it. It has a ton of character and it's okay, you know, it's okay that it's not perfect. And actually now I'm going over to distress it, which is why I wasn't too worried about the lines being perfect because I knew I would, I would want to distress most of the white back off so that you can see more of the blue again. Um, this also helps to just knock down any like higher brush strokes that you had so that in the end it's going to feel nice and smooth, especially on the top. I think that's important. And I wanted to bring back some of the character on the edges and let some of the distressing come through. I feel like there's a good chance that this piece is going to end up in a boy's room so might as well distress it now and give it a little 
uh, give it some natural looking flaws so that when it inevitably gets hurt in the future, it's not such a big deal. It just kind of blends in. I'm using just a 220 grit sheet of sandpaper. I folded it in half. I actually think I folded it in fourths. Um, so it's very, very smooth and just enough to really smooth the paint out. And now I'm just wiping off the dust with a clean cloth. I'm definitely not using a wet cloth here. I want to mention that because you don't want to reconstitute the chalk paint. I've made that mistake before where I feel like, oh, I can wipe the dust off with a wet towel. Don't do that because the chalk paint, A, it hasn't cured at all and it's not top coated. So you're going to bring it just right back to life if you wet it and it's just going to start smearing and you definitely don't want that on a gingham piece. Now I'm reattaching these knobs. I really like these white ceramic knobs. I think they kind of just go with the piece already. So I was happy that those were already on there. Now to seal this piece, I'm just going to be using Dixie Bell's Easy Peasy Spray Wax. It really is one of the easiest sealers I've ever used. So I just spray it over the top, wipe it down, and then I recommend doing probably two or three coats. I'll do three coats on the top and maybe like two-ish coats on the fronts and the sides. And I'm really just gonna spray it on like this. Just making sure to cover everything and then I'll wipe it off. And that's all you gotta do. That's good for my first coat, and I'm gonna let this fully dry. The bottle says to wait, um, you may reapply in an hour, as many coats as desired, and it cures in six hours. So I'll wait about an hour and do my second coat, and then this piece will be all finished. guys here she is all done I really hope that you like how this project turned out of course I know this piece is not gonna be everybody's cup of tea so it's totally okay if you don't like it maybe you preferred it blue maybe you wish it wouldn't have been painted at all that's all fine I understand but I do feel like I was able to make this piece really original and I'm, I'm just really, really happy with it. I think it'd be so cute in somebody's kitchen if you needed some extra like linen storage. But of course, I also envision it like in a, a boy's nursery or like a kid's room. But I mean, any room can use a cute piece of gingham furniture, right? <laughs> I do think that doing this, it tamed down the blue, made that not so overpowering, and it just looks so nice and old-fashioned now. I, I really love it and like I said if you don't like it I totally get it it's definitely an original piece and don't look at my dirty laundry over there <laughs> just realized I'm showing you guys down the hall so here's how it turned out I think it's great uh, much improved even though I liked the blue before I just think this gave it some personality I love how the distressing turned out it almost looks like a piece of fabric until you get kind of close. The wax just made it feel so nice and smooth and finished. And it hasn't even cured fully yet, but you can still tell like it's just really nice and protected now. So I highly recommend that Easy Peasy Spray Wax. That's such a good product. 
So I guess I'm going to let you guys go there. I know this was a quick video, but I thought I'd bring you along as I refinish this piece. Give it a little bit of its own personality and... You know, I'm getting towards the end of this pregnancy. I, I really think this is probably going to be the last piece of furniture I do for a while. So I thought I'd invite you guys along. I really appreciate you guys watching me and supporting my channel. I am so happy that you guys were able to spend some time with me today. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I'll see you next time. Bye.